Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of the Just Teens television program. I'm Stacy Spencer, and today I am so honored to have, well, a woman that the whole world knows because she is Teresa Scanlon, the Miss America winner for 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, the 90th anniversary Miss America, your Miss America 2011 is... Miss Nebraska, Teresa Scanlon. Teresa, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, wonderful. So let's just jump right in because I want to talk a little bit about, and, and, and we have an open book here, so we can just talk a little bit about everything. But last year, um, you became Miss America. Right. So I don't want to time date it or stamp it, but what were you doing before? you became Miss America. <laughs> well, I was crowned Miss America at 17 years old, which was the first time that had happened in over 78 years. So prior to that, um, I was just your regular high school student. I was actually homeschooled my entire life, and I was the middle of seven children. So my mom homeschooled the seven of us. My senior year of high school, I decided to go to our local public high school um, so I could do speech and debate, show choir, a lot of those things that I wasn't able to be involved in prior. So I went to the high school my senior year and was working at the local grocery store actually. I was uh, bagging and carrying out groceries was my job and mm -hmm. so in a town of 8,000 which is my hometown in Nebraska I think every single one of those 8,000 people can say Miss America took out my groceries. <laughs> so that was, that was my job. Um, okay. Then two weeks after high school graduation I competed for Miss Nebraska and ended up winning and so six months later competed at Miss America. Mm -hmm. um, now you have to win a local prior to winning your state. Sure. So I was actually still in high school at the time it was the weekend after I turned 17 mm -hmm. that I competed at the last local competition in the state. Um, it was the last opportunity to qualify to compete for Miss Nebraska. And so I made the cutoff date by one week, decided to go compete at this pageant, and it, I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, it was really spur of the moment. I was this close to not going and competing there. Mm -hmm. But went ahead and decided to go do that and competed, and it was my ticket to Miss Nebraska. And now looking back, of course, I realize how had I not done that, I would not be here today. I would not have, none of those things would have happened. Mm -hmm. And so it was every little choice, every little decision that was made along the way that made that happen. You said that you were the middle of yes. seven children. So let's back up for a minute. How do your brothers and sisters treat you? I mean, are they like really hyped up about all this? Or are you my, just Teresa? my little brothers are so nonchalant. <laughs> they're they're twelve and fourteen right now, and they really could care less. I think <laughs> so. It's so not their thing. Um, right. I mean, honestly, sometimes they think it's cool to have bragging rights to their friends, but other than that, it's it's nothing to them. They actually beg not to come to the Miss America pageant because they would rather stay home and play video games. So that wasn't so much their thing, but my sisters are so supportive, so encouraging. It's just been a blast for them. Um, and I'm really, really blessed to have that mm -hmm. where we're not in competition against each other or where we're, in, you know, there's none of that. And so it's been a really encouraging environment to be a part of and having all of them just behind me 100%. Mm -hmm. I mean, they help me in any way they can and they're so proud. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so thankful to have that in both them and my parents. So what was life like as you were coming up? What was the rearing like? Right. I would say you come from a Christian home. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, quite honestly, my family's very conservative. Um, obviously, we're in a rural community, and so we, we grew up with a hard work ethic, with morals and values, your traditional uh, American values. And so um, really, when I, when I was growing up, my, my household chore each week, at starting at seven years old, was to make bread each week. Okay. <laughs> because my mom loved to make homemade bread and so I'd make that each week and with our big family I'd have to make a lot okay. and I loved that that was my chore each week my mom and I used to always cook and bake together and garden I loved doing all of those things with her uh, my dad's more the outdoorsy type so we would go hiking every Labor Day weekend it was our tradition to go to Colorado and go hiking um, obviously as you can imagine in a large family all of the kids have to help out they have to pitch in they have to do chores things like that and so I'm, I'm so thankful now maybe I didn't appreciate it then <laughs> but I, I'm so thankful now for growing up like that because it really did help instill in me that hard work ethic that was so important 
going forward in this. Mm -hmm. Because many times in these positions, uh, many people don't think that it takes hard work. Mm -hmm. And it's just incredible to realize many girls dream of becoming Miss America and they don't understand how much work it truly is. And so you have to have that foundation of a hard work ethic to be able to make the most of this. So so if you had three core comp components right. for every young person that's out mm -hmm. there looking at the magazines, mm -hmm. you know, because media magazines and right. movies shape our culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not the average teenager that I mean, you're the extraordinary teenager. Right. So what would you say are the three core components that help to shape you and get you ready? It could be something you learned in your right. home. It could be something that you learned from a teacher. What would it be? Discipline, respect? Well, what, what are the, some of the things? three main things, I believe, it's, and it's hard because there's so many, obviously. Sure. But I think overall, uh, some broader subjects is definitely your faith. Mm -hmm. And if I did not have that as a grounding factor, mm -hmm. life would be dramatically different. Sure. And that changes so many things because my faith was what helped carry me through so many of the tough times. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have that, it is very difficult. You give up very easily and you mm -hmm. fall. Um, so faith is a, is a huge component of really any success. Sure. Um, I definitely think, again, hard work. I mean, having that work ethic it changes truly how much you can do, um, how you operate in any situation. And again, whether it's from carrying out groceries in a little grocery store or serving as Miss America, it's the same work ethic that carries you through. Sure. So it's very interesting how it will carry across the board. Um, I think also, in addition, um, love showing love to others. And it seems so cliche because many people ask, you know, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as loving people mm -hmm. because I believe as a Christian, that's our calling. Mm -hmm. That love is mentioned so many times in the Bible that above all things, God commands us to love each other. Sure. And so truly that is the highest calling. That is the number one thing we're called to do. And if nothing else, if nothing else at all, that's the one thing we're supposed to do in life. And so I think that's that's been most important to me. To you. I, I like what you say about there. So let's let's pause it on that for a moment on um, how about loving your enemies? Because going through school, let, let's talk about teens because <laughs> yes. today where everything is so technologically savvy, right. uh, these young kids today, they're so sharp with their iPads and their smartphones mm -hmm. and, and all of that, the, the taunting, the yes. sexting, the texting exactly. is huge. Oh, absolutely. And so you, in a school that's in this rural community, mm -hmm. uh, were you most popular? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I, okay. Like I said, since I was homeschooled my whole life and just went my senior year, I had a lot of friends there, but they were based on similar interests. Okay. I had friends from my dance classes, from my music classes, from I had been acting with them or done community service projects with them. Mm -hmm. So when I got to the high school, I realized that my friends were from very different walks of life, sure. very different cliques, mm -hmm. you know, and going into the school, it was just interesting to me to find they were all in these groups that didn't interact with each other. And so people would ask, well, why are you friends with that person? Why are you friends with that one? Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we have these common interests and these bonding, similar passions, and it doesn't matter that we're in different groups in school. Right. So I was never part of a group. Right. And so that became difficult when it did come to popularity, that I was definitely not in the popular group. Right. You know, um, it was certainly just not my thing. And considering I have never, never claimed to be a normal person. No, <laughs> and, and I'm not either. Exactly. So we're in the same yes, boat. I'm very, I, I've never wanted to be average. I've never wanted to be right. normal. And so I was very much through homeschooling, became very confident in myself and very creative, very different. And I actually started making clothing out of duct tape. And really? so I really, really enjoyed making everything out of duct tape and made clothes out of duct tape. So that was fine being homeschooled. And then I went to public school and came with my duct tape covered car and wearing duct tape clothes. And needless to say, people thought it was a little interesting. So as you can imagine with things like that, and so oftentimes what happens is the, the young people who have something that's different or quirky or odd are ridiculed, made fun of, outcast, whatever it may be, just because others don't share that with them. And so there were those who thought it was a lot of fun and my true friends, you know, enjoyed it with me and thought it was great. Sure. Then others didn't enjoy it the way that I did sure. and would make fun of me for it, whatever it may be. Um, but luckily that didn't get to me at that point because peer pressure was a non-issue to me. Um, Duct tape really does bind people together because it becomes a fun activity that everybody can share. Mm -hmm.